Hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining with us tonight. I have to tell you at the outset that never before have I recorded a video message. So this is a completely new experience for me and a very daunting one. So if it should come across as sounding maybe a bit stilted or disjointed, then I do apologise. But it's good to talk with you, even though I can't see you, and I hope that you're all keeping well. I hope too that you're managing to get through this lockdown period with your nerves and your patience still intact. Who could have imagined that within a few weeks of this new year that we would all be engulfed in this global nightmare or that our lives would be so dramatically disrupted. But there we have it and we'll get through it. So we'll follow the guidelines that we've been given and we'll continue to pray earnestly that God will be merciful and intervene in the situation and bring it to a swift conclusion. I've been reading through the book of Acts recently to see how the early believers coped with the crisis situations that they faced. When the Holy Spirit came in power upon the men and women who were waiting and praying in that upper room that day, the first thing they did after it happened was to go into the streets of Jerusalem and they didn't go out to talk about the experience that they'd just had. They went out and they spread the message of Jesus. When the crippled beggar was healed and a crowd gathered, Peter took the opportunity of sharing the gospel with them. When Peter and John were arrested, and brought before the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders. They were threatened and they were questioned and Peter answered their questions by sharing the message of Jesus. He told them, salvation is found in no one else except Jesus. Stephen lost his life for telling them the same message. And the men and women that believed the gospel message, well, they were persecuted and became refugees. And the Bible tells us that those that were scattered preached the word wherever they went. And this is repeated right through the book of Acts, chapter after chapter after chapter. Everything that they did led to the spread of the message of Jesus. And everything that happened to them, they used as an opportunity to share the hope of the gospel. Well then, now it's our turn. We are the ones that are going through difficult times. And more than ever, the world needs to hear a message of hope. Now we have been given the God-given opportunity to share with men and women that in Jesus Christ can be found life and joy and peace and hope. And the world needs to hear a message of hope at this time. You see, if this coronavirus has taught us it, nothing else, it's taught us that life as we know it is very precarious. It can change in an instant. Our world has changed dramatically in just a matter of days. We have no idea of what the long-term consequences of this virus will be. We have no idea of what the economic situation will be in a few months' time or even in a year's time. That's why it's so important to have a firm foundation upon which to stand when the unexpected storms of life hit. And the only stability, the only true and real and lasting stability is found in a relationship through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He and he alone is the anchor that keeps us firmly fixed when the storms of life sweep over us. King David in the Old Testament he went through some horrific experiences in life, some dangerous experiences, difficulties, 
eh, times of despair, times of great disappointment. But this is what he could say. And his words, you'll find them in Second Samuel chapter 22. I'll just read them to you. This is what David said. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my saviour. Did you notice how many times that David said, my? It indicated that he had a personal relationship with the living God. He knew God, he talked with God, he walked with God, he shared his life with God. And when trials and difficulties came, it was the most natural thing for David to trust in God. Because he knew that God would bring him through, perhaps not the way he wanted, perhaps not the way he would expect, but God would bring him through in the way that he knew would be best. Now it's our opportunity to display that same unshakable confidence in God, to put our roots down firmly in him and to stay fixed and focused on him as we face the challenges that this pandemic has brought to each one of us individually. They'll all be different, different circumstances, same God. But of course not everybody will have this reassurance because not everybody knows the Lord Jesus. Now at this time when we're all being encouraged to help one another and to support one another and to look out for one another, and it's great that we're doing that and continue to do so, but there is a job that only Christians can do, only Christians, and that is to point men and women to the saviour that they need. Ours is the unique privilege of pointing people to Calvary, to repentance, to forgiveness of sins, and to the deep inner joy and peace that comes in a relationship with Jesus. It's always about Jesus. And at this time of crisis worldwide, that's the message that everybody needs to hear. So we can take this pandemic, awful as it is, as an opportunity for sharing the message of hope that can be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. The headlines just now are all doom and gloom, and sadly about the number of people who are losing their lives. We can turn that round about and we can focus on the gospel and the number of people who will find life in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the privilege, that is the opportunity that we have at this difficult time in the world's history. So you can pray, I can pray and ask God to give opportunities to open doors so that we can share with folks the reason for the hope that we have within us. How often do we sing, in Christ alone my hope is found? Well, if you believe that, go out and share it. So we'll continue to look out for one another in the church family. We'll keep in touch with one another. We'll pray with one another, we'll support one another, and we'll encourage one another. But keep in mind the bigger picture too. Remember what Jesus said. Look on the fields. They are white for harvest. Shall we pray? You are our rock in times of trouble. You lift us up when we fall down. All through the storm, your love is the anchor. Our hope is in you alone. Heavenly Father, may these words which we sing so often, 
become the deep-rooted conviction of our hearts during these difficult times. We ask that you will be gracious and show mercy on a broken and troubled world and bring this pandemic to a swift conclusion. And we ask too that during it, that you will put a hedge of protection around those of us and those that we love. And we commit ourselves to you and all our brothers and sisters in Christ, to your care. And we do so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks for tuning in, folks. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. So go with God and honour him. Good night, and the Lord bless you all.